What's going on everybody? It's your boy Long Island Fish Guy here. On today's video, we will, my hair's coming out of here, we will be doing another around the island update on these fish tanks here. Now, as a channel update, I'm gonna try and pump these babies out at least once a month now. Looking for the first of the month. It's currently March 11th, 2018, but we're gonna start this puppy up. I'm also gonna be feeding the fish as I talk about them and talk about each one of these tanks. If this is your first time on this channel, this is something I typically like to do. I have a lot to talk about on a lot of these tanks now, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so first up, we're gonna be taking a look at my 100 25 gallon uh, cichlid tank. I can see my mask is going crazy. So in this tank, what's new <laughs> is my Oscar going nuts. It's the first time he's ever done anything like that. I'm glad I had that on camera. Uh, nothing really new, new in this tank uh, in regards to fish. Typically, I like to feed that thing in cubes, but my Oscar kind of just soaked it. It's uh, That's the little brine shrimp cubes. And now it made a big mess in the tank. I wasn't really expecting that to happen. Um, but in regards to this tank, uh, just a couple of the plans are changing around. Something I really want to highlight here while feeding them, which I'm really not going to feed them a lot more anymore. I'm actually probably taking another one of these cubes, though is this tilapia here. Um, I'm getting a little bit worried because its stomach is a little bit sunken. And this was actually a wild caught uh, spotted tilapia. So he never really showed any signs of having a sunken stomach. So one of the lessons that I learned here was that I'm actually gonna start deworming fish in quarantine. I typically like to quarantine my fish from anywhere between three to about five weeks. Sometimes sooner if I'm feeling a little bit antsy and I want to get them uh, put in the tank already. But uh, that tilapia really never showed any signs of having a sunken belly. Now typically also these eggs that they have, uh, these tapeworm eggs or anything like that, they could be actually laying dormant in a, a fish's uh, system for like three months. I actually just recently learned that. So it's very possible that he has um, not necessarily an internal parasite. Well, a tapeworm is a parasite, but... Um, you know, it's very possible he does have something like that. So what I'm going to do, I actually just got recently, uh, food for that. I got, um, life spectrum or new spectrum, uh, hex shield. So I'm actually going to be feeding that to all of my tanks next week. Uh, when it comes in, put it on, on Amazon, it's actually coming in tomorrow. Um, uh, but all of like this next week, I'm going to be feeding it to the fish just to make sure there's no internal parasites. Uh, I'm not going to bore anyone too much on this tank because again there's not much to talk about but it is my biggest tank and most people love this tank just because it is so big i you know big cichlids in here so it's always great my shovel nose is getting incredible size as he swims across the middle there one thing uh that i'll be talking about more so in the 75 is rehoming some fish one fish i'm thinking about maybe rehoming is this lowest celli uh, just because it's super, super aggressive. Ah, let me take that back. It's aggressive. Um, now again, being a cichlid person, I you know, I know it comes to the territory of having those types of fish, but uh, you know he's kind of just starting to show aggression, not even towards cichlids, more so even at the catfish in here. So that's never a good thing. If a fish is actually showing aggression towards a catfish, that's super established in the tank. That's typically never a good sign. It's still in, you know, I would say post juvenile. So I don't know. I feel like only bad things may come, but that would only set something up for what I actually want to set up in the future, which is this. So I'm going to end the video on this. This is a wrap on the 125. I'm going to finish feeding them up and then I'm going to feed uh, the 75 and talk about the 75 gallon. All right, guys, on this 75 gallon, you'll remember that I actually rehomed, not rehomed, but I moved my fire mouth. If you missed that video, I'll put a card right up here. Uh, my fire mouth got really beaten up in my 125. I knew I kind of needed to rehome him, not rehome him, I move him into this tank. Uh, I just kind of wasn't really 
guess maybe I was in denial saying that maybe he didn't really need to be rehomed and he could live with the big dogs, but he's there now. Um, his mouth is kind of growing back. His left pectoral fin has grown back, so he's doing pretty well. <laughs> I put in the actual video, will he die? And I actually genuinely thought that it was potentially, you know, it was possible that he could. Um, typically when fish get really beaten up like that, it's never really good. Um, and there's always potential for, you know, the stress alone to, to kill them. Also the stress of moving into a brand new environment. Now luckily that's a one year old fire mount, so it's pretty mature at this point. But, you know, a move is never uh, a, a quick thing for fish. Even bringing a fish home from the pet store could kill it. Um... Another thing to talk about is I actually rehomed my male Jack Dempsey. Now, I did rehome that. Um, I brought it to a, the pet store, my trusted pet store, um, just because I, I kind of rethought the whole breeding thing with the Jack Dempseys. The male was just way too small, and I don't think it really worked out. Even if I did add him to 125 and they did spawn, he probably wouldn't have lived long term, so I just rehomed him. And on the topic of rehoming fish, like I was saying for my 125, my lowest cell I is getting a little bit too aggressive. The green terror in this tank is a little bit aggressive in this tank. Um, I think this tank alone right now is a little bit on the slightly overstocked side. My 125 can maybe use another fish or two. Um, so I think what I'm gonna end up doing for all the tanks down here is I'm actually gonna move this tank into being more so of a, a big, cichlid small cichlid tank well what i mean by that is my 29 gallon is typically that so it's a tank where i like to keep small cichlids for example i have my keyhole cichlids in there i have bolivian rams um right now in my quarantine tank i have an epistogramma agazagi i think i'm pronouncing that wrong but um and i'm really beginning to like actually the smaller cichlids rather than the fish that I'm typically used to. And I think as I just age in the hobby, um, more so becoming the type of person that likes to have more fish. And you know, the fun part of this hobby is, you know, buying the fish, you know, going out and finding new fish and adding them to a tank. And that's definitely me. Um, so I think that by having the smaller fish, I can have more fun with the hobby. Um, in regards to feeding, that's actually it. That's all I really typically feed for this tank. Um, sometimes I'll even throw in a little bit of these little shrimp pellets. But in regards to the actual stocking in this tank, um, I wouldn't actually rehome any fish in this tank in regards to bringing it to like a pet store or giving it to a friend. Um, I would, my ultimate goal would be to keep the tilapia in here. It's not really that aggressive. Keep the fire mouth. It is aggressive, but its bark is bigger than its bite. Um, I have a pike in there, which is scary because if I add him, typically pikes don't play well with each other. And I have a belly crawler pike in the other tank. And this pike doesn't really show that much aggression, but I'm not really sure if I can put that type of pike with a Bolivian ram. Um, but again... You know, it's all, you know, up for, for grabs at this point. This is something that I don't think I would be doing for, you know, tomorrow anyway. This is something that is potentially something that I would do in, you know, the next six months to a year. But another stocking update, actually. I, I'm not sure if I covered this in my last video, but I actually added my gold nugget pleco. It's actually hanging out right down there. And I've actually added two new plecos in here. One of which I'd like to be adding into the 125, and one I'd like to be keeping in here. Uh, two rhino plecos have been added to this tank. Uh, they're not in the tank right now, like in, in actual hindsight. Oh, there's actually one right down in the back over here. Um, they're typically, they're really small. They're probably about that big. So, just give you a little pointer of reference. And that's, that's basically it for this. And the stocking, you know, the actual scape in this tank hasn't really changed much. Um, that's about it. So moving on to the 29 gallon. Now this is probably my best looking tank, but it's really getting frustrating to me. Now I really genuinely want to rehome the cichlids that I got from my 
aquarium club that I went to. I won them in an auction. They're called Crypto Heroes Chetamelis. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. They're actually, I think their short term name, their short name is called Rio Chantel. Now, if you Google a picture of them, they're actually really nice looking. But these, I believe, are a a product of inbreeding. And I say that because they all have something wrong with their fins. Like each one of their fins is all messed up. So what I tried to do is go in there and while I rehomed my male Jack Dempsey, I tried to also rehome these guys. And I actually spoke to the owner of the pet store and I said, would you be okay if I actually rehome some like derpy looking fish here? And he kind of knew the whole situation. He goes, yeah, no problem. So I went in here for the past two days, two different days I went in here to go scoop them out. And I wasn't able to. And the reason being is because this 29 gallon is so heavily planted that, and look how overstocked the tank looks. Um, don't get me wrong, I know it does. It's mainly because there's five cichlids in there that I really don't want. And they're all right there in the front. But what I really want to do in this tank is move more so towards the theme that I have in my 125 and also in my 75. Where I have a big wide open area for fish to hang out, you know, not always be hiding. Um, and, and I do have that somewhat in this tank, but it's right in the front here. Um, I can definitely have much more open space. I bought these Amazon swords. There's four of them all in the back. There's one there, 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 and there. There's a small Java fur in there uh, and just a bunch of different assortments in the front. Now I bought those Amazon swords specifically and they were no bigger than these three fingers. They were really small. I've never dealt with plants before. So I kind of really didn't know what I was buying. Now these plants have obviously gotten very big and uh, I really didn't anticipate this. So what I think about I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be getting, I think a big boulder type rock, kind of like how I have in my 125 as my rams go at it now. This has been happening too recently. That's why I feel like I'm gonna have to start rehoming some fish even in this tank. Just because my, my two male rams, they, they keep fighting with each other and I kind of knew it. I kind of wish I had one, one male and two females because this little female here is always untouched. But back to the aquascaping, I think what I'm gonna do is move, there's three pieces of wood in here. There's a piece of wood there, a piece of wood there, and the one in the back where my little bamboo shrimp is coming out. So what I think I'm gonna do is remove that piece of wood in the back, take this piece of wood, jut it in between the two Amazon swords that are over there. And I'm gonna take this piece of wood, jut it in the side of that. And then what I'm gonna do is put one of those big rocks over here with smaller rocks around it. Now this is probably my best looking tank aesthetically wise. So I kind of don't wanna screw it up. But at the same time, it's just too planted. Um, there's a lot of fish in here I don't see on a regular basis. And it's just because this tank is so heavily planted. For example, I have uh, horse face loaches in here that I rarely see anymore. Um, they see them once in a while, but nothing too crazy. Uh, they like to burrow underneath the sand. Uh, I also have a snowball pleco in here. I actually saw it for the first time today while I was trying to scoop out those cichlids. Um, he was actually looking really good, but it's unfortunate because he's always hiding. But, I mean, you know, we'll find out what happens here. Let me know what you think in the comments below, you know, what I should do with this tank. Because um, I think it's it's also as good as good looking as it is. It's a little stale in my eyes. Just like I said before about like getting new fish. I do think that like aquascaping is something that, you know, is also, uh, also always, also always, uh, always, um, you know, changing in, in, in the, the hobby. You, know, you always want to change your style up, you know, even if you move a little piece of wood here, move a little piece of wood there, it's always different. And look how much I have to feed this tank because there's so many fish in it. This, this tank is always, I don't know, it's, it's always evolving with fish because it's also always like a, a grow out tank for me. 
uh, a fish that in quarantine that isn't really exactly ready to go into, you know, the 125 or the 75, it typically stops off here. But before I start overfeeding this tank, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about this tank specifically. What about the 75 gallon? About, you know, what my ultimate plans are is making that a smaller cichlid tank, community tank. I can even maybe put a schooling uh, type fish in there. Maybe even get some rainbow fish back or even some Congo touchers. Who knows? I could have a lot of fun with that 75 gallon if I make it more so of a community tank. Uh, and I could have this on a large scale where I could have double the amount of fish that's in this tank, even though I don't want some of them, in a 75 and I can have a blast. And then this opens up the door to be another type of tank in here. Maybe brackish? I don't know. But again, let me know what you think about the video. Like, subscribe, comment. Peace.